A thousand years before the Battle of Yavin, a young miner named Dessel rose from poverty to being an anointed Sith Lord. However, Lord Bane clashed with the reigning Lord Khan, disagreeing with his philosophy of equality within the Sith. Sith power came from conflict, and by repressing conflict within the Sith, Khan was weakening their power. Furthermore, Khan's egalitarianism was merely a band-aid solution to the larger problem of Sith infighting. The very conflict that fueled the Sith was tearing them apart. To solve this problem, Darth Bane created his own ideology, enacting it by betraying Lord Khan's Sith Brotherhood to total destruction. To maintain the conflict between Sith that was the source of their power, Bane declared that there would be no more than two Sith at any one time, one to embody power, the other to crave it. The apprentice would gather power and eventually supplant the master, claiming the mantle and taking their own apprentice. For his apprentice, Bane took the young girl Zana. Over the following nine centuries, thirty Sith Lords reigned in an unbroken chain that culminated in Darth Sidious. Apprenticed to Darth Plagueis, the young Palpatine infiltrated the political circles of the Galactic Republic, maneuvering his way to supreme executive power as Emperor Palpatine, instigating one of the bloodiest wars in galactic history in the process. But in the end, the Sith Imperative was fulfilled, the Jedi Order was destroyed, and control of the galaxy was secured for the Sith. A thousand years after the Battle of Rusan, a young moisture farmer named Luke lost his family to Imperial brutality. With everything he had known destroyed, he entered the tutelage of the Jedi survivor Obi-Wan Kenobi, leaving his homeworld and joining the Rebel Alliance. Despite Kenobi's death at the hands of the Sith Enforcer Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker grew into a powerful Jedi. Then he learned a terrible truth. Anakin Skywalker, the idol whose footsteps he had been following, was the traitor who helped Emperor Palpatine destroy the Jedi Order. However, Luke refused to accept his father as a lost cause, and showed his true character by forgiving him. Unable to gain Luke's allegiance, Palpatine attacked him, but not before Luke had gotten through to Vader. Anakin Skywalker sacrificed his life to slay Darth Sidious. However, this was not to be the end of the Sith, for Palpatine had prepared for even this possibility. A hidden cache of clone bodies housed his consciousness while Emperor Palpatine went about reasserting his dominance. In order to combat this new threat, Luke Skywalker took a tremendous risk, infiltrating Palpatine's inner circle by willingly submitting to him as a Sith apprentice. Though Luke was almost lost to the dark side, the Gambit ultimately succeeded, and Luke and his allies were able to corner and destroy Palpatine's spirit. As should be obvious based on the biographies, I am comparing Darth Bane specifically within the time frame of Path of Destruction to Luke Skywalker specifically within the time frame of Dark Empire. While Luke Skywalker as featured in the classic expanded universe is the superior version of the character, Grandmaster Luke is also OP as fuck. To be clear, I don't question this as Luke Skywalker is a highly motivated prodigal talent, having him become anything other than a Force God is an insult to the character. But it also makes Grandmaster Luke both difficult to research due to the sheer amount of material and difficult to use because the number of combatants on his level is extremely small. By using Dark Empire Luke, I cut down on the research and get a much more balanced combatant, one who is still highly developed and powerful, but without being OP. For reasons that should become obvious once you watch the video, I believe that Dark Empire era Luke Skywalker would be completely outclassed by Dynasty of Evil era Darth Bane, 
whereas Path of Destruction Bane makes for a much more balanced comparison. Darth Bane was a human male, 26 years of age when he seized the mantle of Dark Lord. A beast of a man, Bane stood at two meters in height and boasted a bodybuilder's physique. He was noted for his hard features and was distinguished by his absolute lack of body hair, caused by the buildup of cortosis particles in his system from his youth as a minor. However, his upbringing as a manual laborer gifted him with exceptional strength and hardiness, while brawls with his belligerent co-workers enabled his initial growth as a physical combatant. His warrior's instinct served him well on the battlefield as a Sith soldier, and fed into his Sith combat training, which developed his dexterity and agility. As a lightsaber duelist, Bane was a heavy hitter, leveraging his strength and dexterity into advanced lightsaber combat. Though he favored stalwart postures, he worked in acrobatics to outmaneuver opponents and hammer their defenses with leaping cleaves. He initially lacked ambidexterity and saw his effectiveness crippled when his primary hand was disabled, though he eventually built up dexterity in his offhand. However, Bane was experiencing the early onset of dark side degradation, his originally dark skin tone replaced by a ghostly pale hue, while his blue eyes were now permanently burned yellow, these corrupted features highlighted by his black tattooed eye pits. During the war, Bane did wear traditional Sith armor, but as a skill-based duelist, it was minimal. The plating was restricted to shoulder pauldrons, with the rest of the suit composed of black leather, likely armor weave. His left arm was sheathed in a ribbed dueling sleeve, ending in a fingerless gauntlet, while his right arm was left bare. However, Darth Bane's greatest asset as a physical combatant was his will to fight, his exceptional discipline allowing him to power through horrendous pain and injury. He will not be beaten into submission. It's a death blow or nothing. Luke Skywalker was also a human male, 30 years of age during the conflict with the Clone Emperor, 11 years after the Battle of Yavin. At 1.72 meters in height, Luke was dwarfed by his father, though he shared Anakin's blonde hair, blue eyes, and athletic build. Though Luke wasn't abused as Bane was, his background as a farmhand on a desert planet made him accustomed to hard labor under harsh conditions. This hardiness allowed him to endure the survival gauntlet that was Hoth, surviving the bitter cold long enough for help to arrive. Luke backed up this endurance with strong reflexes and dexterity, developed as a bush pilot on Tatooine. These traits enabled Luke's growth as an Alliance military operative, and were taken to the next level by Jedi training. Under Grandmaster Yoda, Luke built up his agility and strength with marathon runs through the Dagobah swamps, often with Yoda riding piggyback. Luke's primary trait as a martial combatant was strength, something he emphasized to combat Darth Vader, and leveraged through stalwart defensive postures and steadfast bulldozer advances. His exceptional agility was incorporated via flanking acrobatics and nimble evasions. His dexterity featured quite consistently in his overall style. Luke was further distinguished by his prosthetic right hand, the original having been amputated by Darth Vader on Bespin. The prosthetic provided superhuman grip strength and could be used as a bludgeon in hand-to-hand -hand combat, though Luke rarely leveraged this. During his tenure as Palpatine's Sith Apprentice, Luke took to wearing armor. Essentially a stripped-back version of Darth Vader's suit, he wore an armor-weave bodysuit and gloves as the base layer, with plated greaves and a codpiece. But like Bane, Luke's greatest asset as a fighter was his resolve. 
He will never give up. He will never back down. Both combatants are natural fighters honed by training and experience, and boasted comparable performance levels backed up by comparable armor. In regards to agility and dexterity, I consider them to be on the level. They can keep pace with one another and match one another's skill. However, Bane's native physical strength was superior. Bane was already a physical juggernaut when his Sith training began, and his development was built around leveraging this core attribute. Luke, on the other hand, built up his strength alongside his other attributes, and emphasized it after the fact, in order to better combat Vader. However, this advantage is minor, as force enhancement levels the playing field. But as minor as it is, it's still something that Bane has and Luke doesn't. Darth Bane gets the edge for physical capabilities. The lightsaber that Darth Bane wielded was gifted to him by the Korriban Academy Blademaster Kasim. Originally constructed by Kasim's own master Nadaz, the weapon was a hook-handled fencing lightsaber. Traditionally associated with Form 2 lightsaber combat, pistol-gripped lightsabers fit better into the palm, providing superior leverage and fine control benefits that carried over well to Bane's more strength-oriented approach. The Plasma Blade was originally produced by a ruby crystal of unknown origin, but Bane replaced it with a red synthetic crystal provided by the Academy Headmaster, Lord Cordis. The Bloodshine Blade boasted greater cutting power than the Adegan crystals favored by the Jedi at the time, albeit at the cost of reduced handling. By the time his tenure at the Korriban Academy began, Darth Bane was already an experienced fighter, having spent years as a cantina brawler on Apatros, and later as a highly decorated soldier within the Sith military. Accordingly, he was already a ruthless combatant and a phenomenal unarmed fighter, additionally versed in the use of various military-grade weapons, and most notably, already possessed of some skill in using the Force to bolster his combat performance, albeit only on a very basic, instinctual level. This experience, coupled with his natural aptitude, allowed him to develop rapidly as a Sith trainee. When he participated in classroom sessions with the other Acolytes, he was already surpassing students who had been studying for years longer than him, and once provided with dedicated one-on-one -on -one training from the Sith Blademaster Kasim, it took him at most two years to develop into one of the finest Swordmasters of the era. To be clear, I don't think that Bane truly reached his peak as a swordsman until near the end of his life, at this stage being more easily compared to second-tier Jedi Council Masters such as Plo Koon or Shakti. But to have attained such an advanced level of skill within such a short time frame speaks to his aptitude and potential. Darth Bane's primary martial art was Form 5 lightsaber combat, specifically the Gemso variant. Form 5 was developed to answer the perceived weaknesses of Form 3, being built around following up defensive maneuvers with immediate counters, seizing the initiative rather than passively responding to the opponent. The Gemso variant was specialized towards lightsaber dueling, using fierce power moves to turn aside an opponent's attacks and to crash through his defenses. Bane was steered towards Form 5 by Kasim in order to take full advantage of his well-developed physique, so accordingly he was primarily a strength-oriented power duelist. Later in his career, Bane would add Sarisu and Juyo to his repertoire, but at this stage, he was a pure Gemso stylist. Darth Bane was no textbook practitioner, but a fluid and ingenious swordsman who devised his personal style specifically to address live combat. 
In his application of Form 5 technique, Bain took full advantage of all of the style's attributes while also compensating for all of its weaknesses, demonstrating both variety and flexibility as a swordsman despite specializing in a single form. In my view, the best visual representation of Bane's method would be the fighting style demonstrated by Anakin Skywalker. Direct and exceedingly powerful, but also dynamic, agile, and surprisingly refined. He bolstered his combat performance with the Force, drawing on his rage to strike with supernatural speed and precision, the extent of his powers enabling him to overcome martial artists of equal or greater skill by simply outperforming them. Even before his formal Sith training began, Darth Bane was already a skillful tactician, especially adept at assessing and manipulating his opponents with clever psychological warfare tactics. In my view, much of his skill in this area came from his experience as a Sabacc player on Apatros. During his days as a miner, he played Sabacc in order to supplement his meager income and approached the game with a detached, professional mentality. He became adept at masking his own emotions and maintaining his composure under duress while simultaneously manipulating the other players with subtle cues. He was able to apply this skill to lightsaber combat, his crowning achievement being his penultimate duel with Sirak, his primary rival at the Academy. He started things off by adopting a seemingly clumsy fighting style in order to lull his opponent into a false sense of security, and then proceeded to deliberately draw out the engagement in order to exploit Sirak's lackluster stamina, continuing to do so even as Sirak's fatigue bred desperation and despair, holding back his own offensive until the critical instant and then striking with such ferocity that he nearly killed Sirak outright. Kasim praised this victory as a prime example of Dun Mok, the Sith tactic of psychological warfare, where the goal was not to simply defeat the enemy, but to destroy them on every conceivable level. As far as his use of more conventional tactics went, Bane was skilled at using his environment to seize the tactical advantage, controlling the fight by hurting his opponents, or when things turned against him, to facilitate his own retreat. But at the end of the day, what could be considered both Darth Bane's greatest strength and weakness was the fact that his style was ultimately the product of an academic training system as opposed to true live combat experience. On the one hand, this has given him the opportunity to learn from his mistakes in a relatively controlled setting where screw-ups don't equate to instant death, even if they do result in humiliation. His training under Kasim provided him with exposure to various permutations of the seven lightsaber forms, providing him with a good idea of how to counter them, and leaving him especially familiar with the moveset of the double-bladed lightsaber. To a large extent, this knowledge and familiarity compensated for his relatively limited dueling experience and made him an absolutely devastating opponent against classically trained Jedi and Sith. However, therein lay his weakness. His personal style was very intelligently conceived, being designed with live combat in mind, but he was limited by his understanding of lightsaber combat. His application of his own technique may have been exceedingly flexible, but he lacked adaptability and had serious difficulty combating any fighting forms that he wasn't already familiar with, the main example being Jarkai dual blade fencing. This was a weakness engineered into him by Kasim, who anticipated that he would inevitably have to fight and kill one or more of his former students, and so withheld certain techniques from them, and evidently encouraged them to adopt a more academic mentality based around pre-existing familiarity. But despite this major shortcoming, Darth Bane ultimately prospered from Kasim's influence, developing into a true swordmaster and distinguishing himself as a force to be reckoned with, making up for his relative lack of experience with intuition, cunning, and a colossal skill advantage. Luke Skywalker originally wielded his father's Jedi lightsaber, but lost the weapon when Darth Vader disarmed him on Bespin, forcing Luke to construct his own. 
Using schematics taken from the Journal of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke's weapon closely matched the design of Kenobi's. Robust and utilitarian, Luke's lightsaber followed the Jedi standard, with one notable exception. With the traditional sources of natural lightsaber crystals either raised or blockaded by the Galactic Empire, Luke was forced to create a synthetic crystal. Crafted to match the traditional Ilum crystals, the green plasma blade produced by the gem provided a good balance between cutting power and handling. When reviewing the lightsaber techniques outlined by Darth Bane in the Book of Sith, Luke Skywalker left a handwritten annotation where he described his own style as a hybrid based around Form 5 lightsaber combat. He is primarily credited as a master of the dueling-centric Gemso variant. Luke's practice of Form 5 was built on his instinctive imitation of Vader's method rather than formal study, his own style being only a reasonable approximation rather than true to form, something which Luke himself freely admitted. His father's influence caused Luke to develop into a conservative, though extremely well-rounded power duelist, on the one hand taking the best elements of Vader's style and incorporating them into his own technique, but on the other taking full advantage of the fact that he wasn't saddled with the same weaknesses as his father. And that right there is one of the reasons why I think Luke Skywalker is so awesome. Anakin Skywalker represented natural talent and natural potential, and he was content to allow this raw ability to carry him, developing his skill sets according to his aptitude and assuming that this absolute mastery of a small set of disciplines was enough to get him through any situation, completely failing to take full advantage of his potential. Luke didn't make this assumption, and because he devised his own skill set in a much more calculated manner, he ended up using his own natural talent much more effectively, preparing for the day when he would meet someone better, rather than simply assuming that this would never happen. One of the most prominent supplementary styles in Luke's method was Ataru, taught to him by Yoda during his time on Dagobah. The fourth lightsaber form, Ataru was an extremely aggressive fighting discipline that emphasized the use of flamboyant offensive swordplay backed up by kinetic full-body maneuvers and acrobatics. Ataru was based around the idea of using the entire body as a weapon rather than relying purely on the blade, a concept that Luke understood and embraced, as he frequently demonstrated his expertise in physical combat. While a capable hand with pure Form 4 technique, Luke only incorporated the physical element into his personal style, otherwise relying on straight Form 5 blade work. No doubt the influence of Obi-Wan Kenobi, elements of Sirisu also featured prominently in Luke's style, typically employed for blast deflection, though he also demonstrated an aptitude for Xi'an style targeted deflections. Additionally, Luke was also familiar with Shi Cho, his initial lightsaber training being in the basic maneuvers and velocities of Form 1. Lastly, he was adept in the use of Jarkai dual blade fencing, a skill he developed in order to combat the light whip wielded by the eventual Sith Lord Lumaya, typically wielding a Shoto short lightsaber as his offhand weapon, though he had no difficulty fighting with two full length blades. Essentially, Luke Skywalker took the skill set of Anakin Skywalker and applied it with the mentality of Obi-Wan Kenobi, the goal being to promote adaptability and versatility, not to operate as an unstoppable offensive dervish. While not known to have studied Nyman, his study and practice of complementary forms afforded him a similar functionality, balancing out between a variety of techniques rather than putting all of his eggs in one basket. Luke may not boast the same offensive might as his father, or the unbeatable defense of Kenobi, or the agility of Yoda, or the precision and efficiency of Dooku, but he wasn't far behind any of them. The underlying mentality behind Luke's approach was his adherence to the orthodox interpretation of the Form 5 maxim, peace through superior firepower. As I outlined in Plo Koon vs. Darth Vader, the idea was to promote and maintain peace through assertive action, though not necessarily violence, balancing out the domineering aspects of Form 5 with compassion and understanding. 
Accordingly, while Luke had no qualms about cutting loose and hacking you to ribbons, he typically fought with restraint and control, his first response being an attempt to undermine the opponent's resolve with psychological warfare in order to force a surrender or ideally conscript you to his cause. However, as I think is quite obvious, Luke Skywalker is not a purely psychological fighter, and he does know how to deal with those adversaries who refuse to play ball. On a more basic tactical level, he was an expert at using his surroundings to his advantage for both offensive and defensive purposes. He was adept at using deception and misdirection to further his ends, and he had no issues with using fear as a weapon. Luke Skywalker is capable of overwhelming most opponents quickly with his powerful and deft offensive technique. Failing that, he can endure with his staunch defensive technique, others he can outmaneuver and evade, and if all else fails, he can knock you on your ass with a powerful force push or cleverly integrated physical strike. At this stage in his career, Luke Skywalker was not the absolute master of any one technique, but he was extremely skilled in the use of many. He understood moderation and restraint and fought with mental clarity. Even when driven by emotion, he maintained his control and composure and stopped as soon as he had accomplished his goal. Darth Bane and Luke Skywalker were both examples of the same basic fighter type and had much in common, at least in the broad strokes. Both were strength-based power duelists, the reigning Gemso masters of their respective eras. Both maintained an effective balance between physical technique and psychological subversion, neutralizing the opponent's strengths while attacking their weaknesses. Adapt and overcome. However, their different training backgrounds resulted in radically different skill configurations. Where Bane was a formally trained duelist, a Gemso purist, Luke was largely self-taught, developing his skills by mixing techniques and improvising. Moreover, Bane's success was predicated on his knowledge base, his ability to identify the opponent's style and adjust his own approach to counter, an advantage against formally trained adversaries like himself but a serious liability against fighters who didn't adhere to the mold. Luke, on the other hand, knows better than to make assumptions. Bane's style and approach was tight, where Luke's was quite loose. As I see it, the only one of Luke's skills that provides a definitive advantage over Bane is Jarkai, which isn't applicable because Luke's Shoto isn't part of his regular loadout. He only breaks it out for special occasions. Otherwise, none of Luke's techniques are outside of Bane's experience, and Bane has dealt with the style-shifting tactic that Luke favors against his other opponents. Luke is more versatile, but Bane is more focused. However, it's a two-way street, and Bane isn't bringing on anything that Luke hasn't seen either. And unlike in his fight with Kasim, Bane can't rely on force channeling to compensate, due to Luke's ability to respond in kind. The early fight between these two would be a stalemate, but as the battle continued, the advantage would gradually shift to Luke. Though Bane can adjust his attack pattern to dissect his opponent, the core function and execution of his fighting style remains consistent. Luke, on the other hand, can completely reconfigure his fighting style, preventing Bane from getting a bead on him. Furthermore, Luke is simply a better tactical operative, making full use of his environment to control the fight and entrap his opponents. Bane does use the terrain to corral adversaries, but his goal is to merely cut off their retreat while he overpowers them directly. Bane would offer a serious challenge to Luke, but he cannot reliably overpower him. Luke Skywalker gets the edge as a martial artist and lightsaber duelist. Darth Bane's prodigal aptitude for the Force expressed itself from an early age. Young Dessel lived a life of violence and abuse, enduring beatings from his fellow Cortosis miners and having to contend with his drunken father. Dessel's proclivity for the dark side expressed itself when he unconsciously used this power to kill his father, inducing Hurst's heart attack. 
Instinctively channeling the force in combat, Dessel developed a talent for precognition, which he leveraged to great effect in brawls with his fellow miners, and later on the battlefield as a Sith soldier. Within the Brotherhood of Darkness, forceful adepts were sorted based on their levels of force sensitivity. Only the greatest talents were sent to the Korriban Academy to train as true Sith Lords. As a Korriban Academy apprentice, Bane was provided with advanced training in the dark side provided by the likes of Lord Cordus and Blademaster Kasim, as well as tutelage from his fellow student, Githany. Bane made a point of supplementing his knowledge with ancient lore from the Korriban Archive, later plundering multiple Sith holocrons. Kasim oversaw Bane's development as a Force Warrior. With physical enhancement, he could sprint at full speed for five kilometers before fatigue even began to set in, enhance his reflexes and perception in combat, and perform superhuman acrobatics and feats of strength. These traits could be heightened by dark side channeling. With telekinesis, Bane's lifting strength was several tons, while his maximum kinetic output was sufficient to level buildings and pulverize targets. One of Kasim's specific lessons was the use of force shields to neutralize an opponent's telekinesis, the most basic and necessary defense when contending with other force wielders. Though more inclined to rely on brute telekinetic force, Bane was capable of great precision when necessary. He used force grip to throttle and manhandle targets, as well as to manipulate his lightsaber from a distance, turning a melee weapon into a lethal projectile. Force lightning Bane learned from Githany, learning to channel his power into terrifying storms of dark side energy. From the ancient Sith tomes in the Academy Archive, Bane learned of ancient Sith poisons, and how to purge such toxins from his body with the dark side. However, there were limits. He needed to be aware of the poison in his system, so anything that escaped his detection could still affect him. While he was capable of feeding upon the fear and pain of others to momentarily sustain his body, he had no ability to heal himself through the Force. The destructive energies of darkness only marred. Bane was also an adept telepath, dominating the mind of a wild rancor on Lehan, and resisting the influence of Lord Khan, who was infamous for controlling his Sith followers through mass force suggestion. Bane's application of his abilities was based around leveraging his power as fully and directly as possible. He demonstrated a total commitment to whatever he was doing in the moment, exercising that ability to its fullest potential. A dedicated lightsaber duelist, his first response was to channel his power into physical combat, optimizing his performance level and employing his weapon with greatest possible skill. He managed to seize a dominant edge over Blademaster Kasim in this manner, his enhanced defense holding up under his adversary's speed blitzing assault and his enhanced offense overpowering Kasim's guard. His use of telekinesis followed this pattern, ultimately slaying Kasim by literally dropping the house on him. Darth Bane's mentality as a Force wielder and Darksider was best expressed in his knowledge of Sith rituals. During the Rusan campaign, Bane led the Brotherhood leadership in ceremony, focusing their collective power onto himself, and summoning a massive firestorm into existence, which he used to ravage the Jedi forces. It was his knowledge of the Thought Bomb ritual that allowed him to destroy the Brotherhood of Darkness, tricking Lord Khan into using it as a last suicidal effort against the Jedi Lord Hoth. At this time, Bane was not yet at his apex, yet he was still the strongest Sith Lord, which spoke to his degree of aptitude. He balanced practical experience with arcane knowledge, leveraging his power through them in equal measure. His methods may have been blunt, but his approach was calculated and intelligent, leveraging his full power for maximum effect. To put it bluntly, Darth Bane wielded the dark side like a tactical nuke. In Luke Skywalker's first lesson with Obi-Wan Kenobi, he was taught to stretch out with his feelings and harmonize with the Force, expanding his awareness by channeling its power. With this basic skill, he enhanced his senses and reflexes, 
allowing him to quickly master blast deflection. This capability proved instrumental in the destruction of the Death Star. Instead of relying on his X-Wing's targeting computer, he put his faith in the Force and successfully performed the impossible shot, firing a proton torpedo down the Death Star exhaust port and destroying the station. Perhaps the greatest example of Luke's willingness to give himself over to the Force was when he channeled Kenobi's spirit on Mimban, granting him access to powers beyond his level, which allowed him to engage and narrowly defeat Darth Vader. However, without this enhancement, he struggled with active Force abilities, having to marshal his full concentration and willpower merely to retrieve his lightsaber with telekinesis. All this changed when his training under Grandmaster Yoda began. His physical enhancement capability was heightened, allowing Luke to employ superhuman acrobatics to outmaneuver and outflank opponents, and override the mechanical strength of Darth Vader's cybernetics, allowing him to ultimately overpower the Sith Lord. His initial exercises with telekinesis involved levitating multiple objects while in trance, though he could employ minor telekinesis casually. When his powers matured, Luke's telekinetic magnitude was sufficient to destroy an AT-AT walker, and he demonstrated an ability to penetrate an opponent's telekinetic barrier, blindsiding Palpatine with a force push. However, in all his powers, Luke favored subtlety and precision over brute force, expressed in his use of telepathy. Basic mind tricks allowed him to diffuse conflicts or gain access to restricted individuals and places. Luke's approach to telepathy, as with all things, was based around harmony. He isn't issuing commands, he's offering friendly suggestions. He's not dominating you, he's inclining you towards consent. Though Luke did familiarize himself with traditional defensive abilities, employing Tutaminus to absorb blaster fire and putting up an active force shield powerful enough to deflect turbo laser fire from an AT-AT, his approach was based around simply cancelling out the movements in the force that were the opponent's powers by leveraging his influence. This generalized active defense circumvented the need for specific defensive powers, and proved effective at neutralizing telekinetic attacks. However, his ability to defend against Force Lightning was extremely limited, and he could only repel low-intensity bursts. Like his father, Luke did carry a darkness within him, and could call upon Force Rage to boost his combat performance. As Palpatine's apprentice, much of his instruction centered around abstract Sith philosophy, as Palpatine was aware that Luke was faking it and didn't want to give him anything of substance. That being said, Luke did learn basic Sith alchemy, creating a pair of mutated dark side sentinels from his own genetic code, and his powers of mental influence were heightened. He commanded the Imperial forces through the projection of fear, and could create incredibly lifelike force illusions fooling Han and Leia into believing that he was accompanying them in their escape from Biss. Where Luke's lightsaber skills are best described as the skills of Anakin Skywalker applied with the sensibilities of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Luke's Force abilities would be described as the powers of Darth Vader applied with the sensibilities of Kenobi. Like Vader, Luke favored using telekinesis to influence his environment and blindside opponents, but rather than hammering enemies with a barrage of thrown objects, Luke would simply dislodge specific environmental features and let gravity do the work for him. Though Luke overwhelmingly favored non-lethal attacks, he was perfectly willing to kill if necessary, killing multiple Nagri with a lightsaber throw, or crushing several of Palpatine's Dark Jedi beneath a statue of Darth Vader. Luke Skywalker's mentality as a Force wielder was best expressed in his use of Force Harmony. He was at his best when combining his power with other adepts, and at his worst when he made the mistake of fighting alone. This isn't to suggest that Luke is weak on an individual level, but the power of the Jedi has always come from their support for one another. As a lone Jedi, Luke could not overcome Palpatine, but when joining his power with Leia, they were the Jedi fire that outshone his evil. 
And unlike the knights of old, Luke Skywalker was not afraid of the dark. Again, Darth Bane and Luke Skywalker combined close parallels with dramatic differences. Both spent years making improvised use of the Force as military operatives before their formal training began, and both advanced rapidly in their training, attaining a level of skill comparable to lifelong adepts in less than half the time. Starting from the top, Darth Bane and Luke Skywalker boasted a comparable level of magnitude with telekinesis and employed many similar tricks. However, their comparable defensive ability means that direct telekinetic attacks are severely reduced in effectiveness. Both have bypassed the TK barriers of opponents by using the environment as a weapon, but Luke did so more proactively and more precisely. Bane's idea of influencing the environment was to literally collapse a building on his opponent. Luke's lack of advanced Tutaminus means that Bane's lightning is a serious advantage in his corner, especially given Luke's inability to respond in kind. But Luke still has more defensive options. If his active force shield could deflect turbo laser blasts from an AT-AT, it would likely hold up under Bane's lightning, and Luke could also use his lightsaber. Bane's advanced Sith knowledge simply isn't applicable, as it relates mainly to Force rituals and Sith poisons, where the Dark Force illusions that Luke learned from Palpatine could be used to distract and deceive. Though Luke wasn't noted for doing so until much later in his career, it is still a possibility, and does fit with his tactics. Bane treated the Force as a trump card. His approach predicated on his ability to overpower any opponent, not an unjustified assumption given his personal experience, but a dangerous conceit against Luke Skywalker. Where Bane is waiting for the best moment to unleash his full power and go Dark Avatar, Luke is taking every little opportunity to do a thousand horrible things to his opponent. Luke Skywalker gets the edge as a Force wielder. Darth Bane and Luke Skywalker were both examples of the same archetype, but their configurations were reversed, representative of the differences between Sith and Jedi training and development. Where Bane's Sith training was based around leveraging a specific core attribute for maximum effect, Luke's Jedi training developed all of his attributes in equal measure, with Luke deciding on his skill configuration after the fact. Bane's growth as a lightsaber duelist was dictated by his physique, leveraging his muscle mass as a power duelist, while his growth as a force wielder was dictated by his aptitude, channeling the dark side with maximum intensity in order to attain godlike power. As a result, Bane made full and ruthless use of his body, his weapon, and his power, but his applications lacked creativity. Bane represented the perfection of the art wielded as a blunt instrument, where Luke represented a simple instrument wielded artfully. Emperor Palpatine neatly summed up the differences between Jedi and Sith ideology by stating that the Jedi sought power through understanding, where the Sith sought understanding through power. The Sith wanted to encompass and control all of existence, where the Jedi were content to start small and gradually branch out, growing as part of existence rather than placing themselves above it. Where Bane committed absolutely to whatever he was doing in the moment, Luke balanced out between all of his skills, integrating them for tactical advantage. Darth Bane's intensity allows him to pose a serious threat to Luke, but Luke's comparable power allows him to endure, while his more balanced skill set allows him to strike from unexpected vectors. As I see it, the best analog for a hypothetical confrontation between Darth Bane and Luke Skywalker is the duel in the Chancellor's office between Darth Sidious and Mace Windu. Like Bane, Sidious leverages his full power into whatever he is doing in the moment, fighting as a wild offensive dervish 
and unleashing elemental destruction via the Force. And like Luke, Windu maintains a balanced tactical awareness, using the opponent's energies against them while subtly subverting them, using the environment to seize the tactical advantage. Bane's sheer power and skill would allow him to put up fierce resistance, but Luke's broader array of attack options allows him to blindside and subvert Bane, while his comparable power allows him to endure Bane's elemental fury. Luke wouldn't overwhelm Bane, he would take him down with a single hit counter. I declare Luke Skywalker the victor.